Let's look at these things. What, what, what's the perfect sort of option? Or I suppose you're going to say it depends on what your situation is. Look, it does. But I, I don't think there's any, any harm in giving some sort of broad guidelines. Yeah. At the end of the day, what do you want to do from a retirement fund perspective? You want to maximize whatever you can put away from a tax deductibility point of view, mm -hmm. whether that be in a pension fund or whether that be in an RA. That's step one. Get that right. If you've still got disposable income that you want to start saving, do so first in something that's called a collective investment scheme, which is a unit trust. Okay, mm -hmm. Everyone's familiar with a unit trust. Or even if you do have that online share trading account or you want to buy Satrix or whatever the case may be, they all fit into that category. Okay. Right. Do that insofar as it makes sense until you start generating tax on any interest that might be in there. But that's going to take quite a while. Only once you've reached past that do you then start saying an endowment is actually where I need to be. So I think that's probably the biggest mistake is where there's a lot of people sitting and they're saying, I've got these endowments, they're fantastic, I was told that they pay out tax free and they this and that, and that's all true in a sense. The problem is they're getting taxed heavily within the fund without you even knowing it. So I think the key is to say, on the outside, um, endowments, by and large, if we look at the, the retail market in South Africa, most people probably shouldn't have an endowment in their portfolio. If they do, they're actually leaving money on the table for the tax man. Okay. Right. We're going to try and summarize this at the end, okay? Mm. Because uh, uh, I, need, I need summaries, especially on things like this. Okay, so we've got the maximum tax deductible stuff that we've put away and then there's still some money left on the table so we put that into a unit trust or, yep. or, or onto an online share trading account Correct. and we're using that. Right. When the whole thing, so, so we are preparing ourselves for retirement by doing all those things. We've got our RAs going, we've got our online share trading, we've got a, so we've got an equity portfolio there and now down the line um, as we were discussing last week, you, you need to change your, your risk assessment, mm. the weighting of it, the, the older you get. And then now you come to retire. And now Jeremy says, I have had enough of having headaches on a, Thurs uh, on a Wednesday night. It used to be Thursday nights on a Wednesday night with all these oaks. And that's it. I'm out of, I'm out of media altogether and I'm not going to do any more work because I actually want to just sit at the Morningside Country Club and have a beer. Um, then I have a whole load of other tax liabilities. Correct. So in other words, you have current if you're pre-retirement, yeah. you've got at retirement and then you've got post-retirement. And that's why where it becomes a bit of a juggling act to try and say we need how, to smooth it out. How do you limit those at retirement? Limiting them at retirement is, is really, at retirement you've got a choice if you've got a retirement fund or a retirement annuity more specifically, mm -hmm. that you can take a maximum of one third out as a lump sum. Okay. Okay, obviously there's, there's, there's tax that will pay, be paid on that, but the first 315,000 is, is at zero percent the next 315 is 18%, and so it scales up in much the same way as a, as a marginal tax rate would. So you need to find that fine balance of saying, let me take the lump sum out, okay, without incurring too much tax. Mm -hmm. That lump sum that I've got, along with any of the other discretionary investments that I've accumulated, mm -hmm. I can actually start drawing income from. Now this is the key difference as well, because now on the retirement fund side, any income I draw off that retirement fund is going to be gross income. Tax man's going to say it's like you're getting paid a salary, I'm going to take my chunk. Okay. On the discretionary side, anything that comes off there, tax man says those are deemed to be capital withdrawals and therefore you will not take be, be paid tax on that. So this is where you start balancing it ah, off and saying okay. how much do I want to take out of my retirement fund so they can bring that marginal tax rate up to you know, 18, 20% but not take it much further than that and then I'll draw the rest from my discretionary side. So you can, if I'm thinking correctly here, if I've got, let's say, four retirement annuities running, and I get to 65 years old, and um, I, le let's assume nothing has changed in the law, because otherwise it's going to become total sure. chaos here. Sure. I can take 300,000 from each of those, mm. and there I've got myself 1.2 million, and that I can put into a discretionary investment. The 300,000 is 
for your total retirement funds. Oh, is that okay, total? So it's not per So it's not per... Oh. Yeah. Damn it! I thought I was on. I, I, I thought I was onto a good thing here, and everyone was going to say, "Mansfield, you're um, you're absolutely wonderful. Look what you've done for the industry." Damn. But this is also where a lot of people start saying, "Ah, you know what? Retirement funds, in general, because they've had the bad press about costs, and rightly so. Okay, mm -hmm. um, you know, you get the tax deduction now, but you pay tax later." True, but one has to look at the arbitrage opportunity that we've got there. If I'm on a maximum tax bracket at the moment. I'm going to get a 40% tax saving on that premium. It's then going to grow within the fund at zero tax. It's the only place where no tax is levied within a fund. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's going to grow at zero tax. If I save up a million rand, I'll take my third tax-free. Right. Okay, so I've saved 40%. I'm getting this tax-free. I've got 600,000 rand left. Let's say, for example, I want to exhaust that as quickly as possible. And I say I'm going to take 10% of that per annum. And that's going to last me sort of 10 years or whatever. I get 60,000 Rand. That's again below the tax threshold. I've saved 40. I've got 300 lump sum tax free. I've got my income tax free over here as well. So one has to balance that thought out. It's not just an automatic, I save here, but I pay then. One can say, I can save a lot here and pay a little here. Are there, and, and are it. there you were saying earlier that th this is what you guys do. You, mm. you look at situations and, and try and get the, the weighting right. Are there a lot of companies like that in the country? I like to think so, but, but I don't think as, 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 uh, as many as we'd like to hope. Um, and, and I think that's why the business was set up in such a way as well, um, is, is to provide the service, because I, I believe it's an invaluable one. Um, if you can, like I said, you know, w one of the recent clients, we, we managed to add back an extra 5% into their portfolio per annum after all my costs and after all the new asset management costs um, to get a better, better portfolio going. So they got an extra 5% going, going into the future. Um, and it's just tax and costs we looked at. And, and you, I presume then, you charge your services out on an hourly rate or whatever. So, so if I came to you, you would say, you will cost, I will charge you a thousand rand an hour and this is the service I will provide. And then it's up to me to see if I want to take it any further with you. How far you take it, that's, that's, that's quite right. Quite okay. right. And I'm not the only one for, the, for that. There's, there, there are a few others as well. Okay. Um, let's come back now to the, the whole thing, the, the, the post-retirement, and I'm starting to feel old here talking about retirement. I've been talking about retirement for the last two shows. Uh, we've got to do something about uh, saving for young kids next week or something. I don't know. Um, post post retirement, uh, Stephen was saying last week that something like I think his number was people are only getting thirty percent of what they they need to get sixty percent of what they were earning, mm. and they only re in reality most people are only getting thirty percent, um, which to me means. You're going nowhere, really. Sure. Um, is, would you agree with that, that, that number? And, and how, how, how do you try and bulk that up? How do you try and get it to 60? I, th I think the, perhaps the easiest one, and I know it's probably thrown around the industry a lot, is the earlier the start, the better. Mm -hmm. If you're going to allow compounding interest to work, the best way of doing that is to start early. So, so I think that's, that's the big thing. The second problem we have in this country is preservation of funds. So basically, we're having... Um, people moving from job to job every five to seven years if you're lucky but every time they do that they take a bit more money out of their pension fund and they throw it and they you know pay off a car or pay off a house or whatever the case may be um, so I think that's a big issue as well if we can start earlier and if we can preserve those savings we will be in a much much better place and of course thereafter it really comes in saying well what about the tax what about the cost and what about where am I investing I think the other big issue we do have in South Africa although it's changing slightly, is we, we have um, people being recklessly conservative. In other words, saying, wait, wait, I'm very, very conservative. I don't want to take on any risk, but the risk is that they land up with 30% of what they need at the end. That's a far bigger risk than any market can give you. Recklessly conservative. Recklessly conservative. Now, there's a, there's a, new, there's a new saying. There's a new me. phrase. Yeah. yeah. Um, is it not because we're... we're Firstly, we don't understand, and secondly, we were a little bit scared sure. to push Absolutely. the boundaries. Absolutely. And, and I think, unfortunately, there's a third element to it, and that's a lot of advisors are sitting out there saying, well, I don't want to get sued, so let me put my, myself, my client to something conservative. I can, can't get sued for not making them enough money, 
but I can get sued potentially if I've lost them some, some, some money. So I, I think there, there is a bit of an industry problem there, and in fact a conversation I took up with the Faisal a little while ago on that very point, um, is, is they're quite happy to, when people have lost money, um, start sort of bringing out the belt. But there's a lot of people out there that will never, ever, ever meet their goals, and they're going to run out of money at the end of the day. And, and to me, that is a massive risk, and it's a massive injustice. Here. So once again, it's, it is a question of, of sitting down with your advisor and talking to them and, and getting the numbers out of them and finding out where you stand and what, what your investments are doing. Absolutely, Jeremy. And, and, and this type of show, and there's a lot of, I think, good media out there that is educating clients. So, so in much the way as Stephen said, you know, get as much knowledge as you possibly can and go to those meetings empowered so that you can ask the right questions and make sure that you're getting some sensible answer out at the end. We're going to wrap up now. Let's just go back to the thing. Firstly, get as much... As much tax, tax deductibility as you can within your retirement fund, whatever that may be. Yeah. Anything over and above that, you want to look at something in the line of a unit trust or share portfolio or a Satrix or any one of those things. Only much later down the line, when you've got some serious assets to, to start managing, can you start looking at endowments as a, as a viable option from a tax perspective. What are serious assets? 10 million plus. Okay, I'm not there. <laughs> <laughs>